Yes, I'm on to another impulse buy again. Last week I splurged and bought this ASUS ZenBook Duo 14-inch laptop. ASUS made this innovative dual screen laptop by squashing the keyboard and touchpad down to the bottom. Surprisingly, the aesthetic and usability is still quite good and very easy to get used to. Let me show you all the quirks and the interesting features of this ZenBook Duo after using it for about one week. Hi everyone, welcome to another Sky Perspective video. There are already a lot of great review videos on this ASUS ZenBook Duo, so rather than repeating all the specs and main features, I'm going to show you all the quirks of this laptop and specifically on how using this laptop differs from using other traditional laptops. By the way, this video is not sponsored and all the thoughts and opinions are from me and not influenced by ASUS or anyone. Okay, let's get started. I'll start with this Thunderbolt USB-C ports. Have a close look. The ports are actually not parallel to the outer casing of the laptop. Now don't get me wrong, this is actually a good sign. It tells me how much ASUS is innovating and thinking out of the box. The other thing that is not so obvious are these indicator lights. Yes, I'm glad ASUS, a traditional PC motherboard and graphics card manufacturer, knows how important a battery indicator light and activity lights are. When I plug in a laptop to charge, I'd like to know that it is charging. I'm so glad that there is this indicator, which turns red when it's charging, and when it's done, it turns white. And the other light beside it is the laptop operating indicator. It lights up when the PC is running, and it blinks when the laptop is on standby. Actually, there are two of these indicators. There is another one on the power button itself, so we don't need to turn our heads to look for it. They both light up and blink at the same time. While we are looking at the keys and lights, I might as well show you the keyboard backlit lighting. The three levels of lighting is toggled using one button. The lights do not flicker like what you are seeing on the screen. That's actually my phone's camera doing that. And this is how it looks from the viewing angle when I'm using the laptop. A lot of videos did not show the back of the laptop. I think that is the most beautiful design of this laptop in my personal opinion. Even better than the hinge. I really like the geometrical cut design of how they designed the casing and the speaker grills. If you notice, even the rubber stand that runs across the entire width of the laptop has this geometric cut design. This just makes the entire ZenBook Duo look so sleek. ASUS uses Torx screws by the way, in case some of you want to take this apart. As for the top of the laptop, it's a fingerprint magnet, and you would have known this from other videos. What I like about this fingerprint is that I have to constantly keep cleaning it all the time, which means my laptop will always look pristine and shiny all the time as well. Up next, let's talk about the hinge that sets this laptop apart. The second screen is mounted to the hinge mechanism instead of floating, meaning when the screen is in this position, we can't lift up the second screen. All the mechanical linkage of the hinge and the screens are all securely interlinked, and they are very smooth, I must say. There is very little play when I try to lift the second screen by itself. And to me, this is very good engineering, Asus. Well done. Also, notice this tiny little stud. They are the studs that prop up the laptop when the screen is fully open. Okay, in terms of this tiny little touchpad, it's actually surprisingly quite usable for me. And I really like the offset to the right location instead of traditional at the bottom center. Notice, I can rest my pinky and other fingers at the side of the laptop 
while my index finger and thumb are using the touchpad. And this is a quick demo of how I use the touchpad. The only problem is when I want to use three or four finger gestures to switch desktop, I have to squash my finger like this. Of course, as you would have learned from other videos, we can simply tap the second screen with three fingers to turn it into a gigantic touchpad. And it's quite convenient to do that. Now, I'll share with you a trick that makes this tiny touchpad more usable. What I've done is I've tuned the touchpad cursor speed up. So the travel distance to move from one end of the screen to the other end is much quicker and uses less touchpad space. And even though the pointer movement will become faster and perhaps more sensitive, aiming at an icon to click is still quite easy. Thanks to the way my hands are positioned to use the touchpad. Now, let's talk about the second screen affecting my use of the laptop. The second screen has been improved with a tilting angle compared with the previous generation of ZenBook Duo. However, when I start to slouch on my chair, I can still lose quite a bit of viewing angle clarity. I guess this is kind of good because it reminds me to sit up straight all the time. The second screen is surprisingly useful because this ZenBook Duo is a touch screen. I realize I am touching and moving windows around more than I expected. My hands idling position are near the sides of the screens, more than hovering around the touchpad and keyboard. It's like my tablet. I can slide from the left side of the screen to reveal task views and slide from the right side of the screen for the notification shade. And I use the touch screen more than the touchpad. By the way, we can pop up the number pad on the second screen if we needed that. ASUS has thoughtfully designed the software and hardware integration of the second screen very, very well and I'm pretty impressed with that. The other software features that makes the second screen so useful is this window tiling feature. ASUS called it Action Menu. When we use the touch screen, we can't drag and drop across both screens. So this Action Menu lets us pick and choose how we want to tile the window in the second screen below. I'm surprised I use this feature all the time. Another very useful feature of the second screen is this button to swap all windows between the two monitors. And yes, it adjusts the heights of the windows automatically as well. Let me demonstrate. I'm typing my script on the left window while reading on the right. On the bottom second screen, I have Slack messaging and Google Maps running to watch the traffic. Imagine I now want to reply to a Slack message and do it on the big screen. All I have to do is just press this button to swap the windows on both screens. And when I'm done replying to the message, I just press the button again to return to my script writing. I guess the high price we are paying for this laptop is because of features like this. And I must say, it is impressively functional, rather than just gimmicks. 
there is a very nice aesthetic appeal to this second screen, which is kind of hard for me to describe how good it is. The second screen is like half of the first screen with 515 pixels height, almost half of the 1080p. It's big enough to be very useful and small enough not to take up too much space. I think with this ZenBook Duo, ASUS has nailed this one. I bought this laptop from JB Hi-Fi at $2,400, and I think every penny of it is so worth it. My version has the NVIDIA MX250 dedicated graphics and 16GB RAM, and I love every part of this laptop. Now, onto this tiny camera. This is the tiny camera with a bit of my fingerprint smudge on top. To the right of the camera is the infrared sensor used to scan our face. It works quite well even in low light to no light conditions, like in a total dark room, it still works pretty well. And there is this LED indicator light on the left of the camera showing when the camera is in use. There is also a pair of stereo left and right microphone. See these two tiny holes on top? They are the microphones which records my voice pretty well. The stylus is also surprisingly useful. I haven't had time to fully explore and use it to its full potential yet. Initially, the stylus doesn't work at all on either one of the screens, and I was wondering if it's broken. After googling, I learned that there is a AAA battery inside, and that needs to be activated by removing the barrier sticker, which I wish the instruction is a little bit more obvious at the beginning, rather than me having to google for the instructions. And finally, this is a sample of the typing sound and how fast I can type on this claustrophobic tiny little keyboard. It has a different tactile feeling compared to a MacBook keyboard, but it's surprisingly nice to type on and pretty quiet too. Have a listen. So this is what I observed over the last one week of use, and I'm sure there will be more unique quirks that I'll discover in time to come. If you are thinking of buying this ASUS ZenBook Pro Duo, I would say, go for it. I'm really enjoying this laptop. If you have any specific questions or things you would like to see, let me know in the comments down below, and I'll try my best to answer you or even make a video for you. Hey everyone, I've put in a lot of work to make this video. Please help me by subscribing and liking this video. Your small gesture of liking this video can actually help my channel a lot. Thank you very much for your support. I'll see you in the next video. Take care and look after yourself everyone. Bye.